Okay, so let's have a look at expert systems. It takes time and money to train experts, and they can only work in one place at a time. Our aim is to put their knowledge into a computer and share it. The first step in this is we need to have the actual experts. I mean, these are the people who are going to have the knowledge that we require. A common uh, mistake here is to say, or to, to give the impression that the expert is the person making the expert system. It would be a programmer or a group of programmers or a software team that would be making this, probably following the system's life cycle. But once we've actually gathered knowledge from the expert, we need to make what is called a knowledge base. A common mistake here is to say that we need a database. We don't. We need a knowledge base. And a knowledge base is made up of facts and rules. And a fact is something which is unconditionally true. And a rule is something which is conditionally true. If some conditions are met, it's true. We don't need to remember these facts and rules or how we would make these facts and rules. That would come in A levels or at degree level. What you need to be aware of, though, is that you have a knowledge base full of facts and rules about a given topic. Once you have these rules, there's no point having um, a knowledge base if you can't find answers. So we need a set of questions in order to ask our knowledge base. To do this, we have something which is called an inference engine, which queries the knowledge base. I'm going to try to avoid using the word search, as search gives the idea of a search engine, and that's um, a common mistake to write in the exam. So as well as writing a database, people talk about a search engine. It isn't a search engine, it doesn't look for, uh, it doesn't look down fields or records and actually try to find the correct answer. It uses something called an inference engine. And once the inference engine can um, ascertain what would be possible answers, these answers need to be outputted to a screen. If you're interested in, 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 in this kind of topic, um, you want to have a look at something called forward chaining and backward chaining, which is how the, the inference engine actually finds information. But once we find this information, the, simplistically put, you would need to have the answers output. And these answers, these answers would be output to an end user, and the end user would be the non-expert, would need an interface in order to write in the questions. The inference engine would then somehow ascertain what would be possible answers by looking at the uh, knowledge base, which would be the facts and rules, and then would be given an actual answer. Normally with the exam board, these, these answers need to be given in context, and we'll have a look at some of the answers now. So if you're lucky, you'll get a very simple question like this. So we have a car mechanic. So car mechanics often use expert systems to help them diagnose faults with car engines. Tick four components of a typical expert system. Well, you can always reverse engineer this with a, gra a graph plotter. So you know that's a, a, almost like a very huge printer that uses a real pen. No, inference engine, we know that that's correct. An interactive input screen, well, we know that's correct. A knowledge base, where well, we know that's correct. So we've got three of our four there. Rules base, well, we know a knowledge base is made up of facts and rules, so there's a good chance that might be the correct answer. But we could be a bit confused here, as it's a bit ambiguous. Rules base, well, knowledge base is made up of facts and rules. But if we have a look at the other answers, scanner, well, it can't be a scanner. A spreadsheet, it can't be a spreadsheet, and it can't be a webcam. So rules base must be uh, the answer the exam board we're looking for. We then come down here and it says, well, name two other applications. Well, we know car mechanics were used previously, so we can't say car mechanics. So the most obvious one is uh, medical diagnosis. We could have um, illegal systems. We could even put chess in there and um, some kind of prospecting for minerals. They're the, the typical answers that you tend to have. However, we could also get the compulsor to diagnose an illness. And the six marks are not for here. Well, describe, or we need to think, well, what are the actual components? Well, we have the interface for the 
non-end users to answer or to enter their queries. We didn't have the inference engine, which is going to search the knowledge base. The knowledge base is made up of facts and rules, and we know that this is all going to be outputted in some well, outputted somehow. Now we want to put this into context. So when I be, when I if I was answering this, I'd be looking at the idea of it's the doctor's diagnosed illness. So the first part, the interactive screen for the end user. Well, it can't be a blank screen, so it must be asking questions. And if it's for doctors for diagnosing illnesses, it's going to be asking for what are the symptoms. And you would think that once it's asked for one symptom, this would lead on to other symptoms, such as if you had a temperature, how long you had that temperature, and what would be the uh, what is the actual temperature, or a rash. If it's a rash, where in the body is that rash, and so on and so on. Once it's built up all these questions, you would then write that the inference engine would use these inputted questions, well the answers to these inputted questions, not to search the um, knowledge base, because it's not searching it. It would be comparing or analysing the knowledge base in order to find possible, and this is where you want to put things into context, it would want to be diagnosing the illness and probably putting together some prescription. Now this prescription or possibility of illnesses would then be output to the screen. Now if you put that down together what you're asking for here is the four marks for the components and then two marks for you putting it into context. I'll have a quick look at the actual exam board's answer here. So you can see that the symptoms have entered using the user interface, that the user interface displays questions based on previous questions. The user answers questions using the user interface. The inference engine compares the symptoms with those in the knowledge base. Much of the symptoms are, uh, symptoms are found and possible diagnosis illnesses are displayed.